special session to all member states and made the information available to the specialised agencies as well as other intergovernmental organisations and national human rights institutions and to non-governmental organisations with consultative status with ECOSOC pursuant to the Council's Rules of Procedure. The online inscription for the list of speakers was opened on Friday the 18th of November at 4pm. It closed yesterday at 6pm. The speaking time will be 2 minutes and 30 seconds for Council members and 1 minute and 30 seconds for observer states and other observers. As announced yesterday during the open-ended informative consultation, the Bureau had agreed on the 15th of November to propose to the Council for its approval a set of extraordinary modalities for the 35th Special Session, similar to the modalities that were applied to the Council's 51st Regular Session. The modalities were included in the Annex to the Minutes of the Bureau meeting, circulated on 17th of November. I would like to reiterate that these modalities, if approved by this Council, would apply exclusively to this 35th special session and they should not serve as a precedent. Are there any delegations wishing to take the floor at this time on the proposed extraordinary modalities? I see none. Can I take it that the Council agrees that the proposed modalities will be applied during the 35th Special Session under the current circumstances? If I see no objections, it is so decided. Please be reminded that in order to allow for full and accurate interpretation of your statements, you should speak at a reasonable pace. I would also like to take this opportunity to ask for everyone's support to ensure that this special session is carried out in an efficient and dignified manner. I appeal to all delegates to strictly respect the speaking time limits and to adhere to language that is commensurate with the dignity that should be inherent to our discussions. I now have the honour to give the floor to Mr Volker Turk, High Commissioner for Human Rights, to make a statement. Welcome, sir. You have the floor. Gracias. Thank you very much, President. This distinguished delegates, at the outset, let me begin by saying that I have a deep admiration for the people of Iran. On my numerous official visits to the country in my previous incarnation, I have been inspired by the people I met and by the country's rich cultural and linguist literary heritage. Iran's hosting of Afghan refugees was and remains a true expression of international solidarity. It pains me to see what is happening in the country. The images of children killed, of women beaten in the streets, of people sentenced to death. We have seen waves of protests over the past years calling for justice, equality, dignity and respect for human rights. They have been met with violence and repression. The unnecessary and disproportionate use of force must come to an end. The old methods and the fortress mentality of those who wield power simply don't work. In fact, they only aggravate the situation. We are now in a full-fledged human rights crisis. The current protests sparked on 16 September following the death in custody of Gina Mahsa Amini have expanded throughout the country. Protests have reportedly taken place in over 150 cities and 140 universities in all 31 provinces of Iran. Minority regions continue to be disproportionately affected, especially in terms of casualties. Some of their representatives 
in Parliament have voiced criticism towards the response by the authorities to these protests. Women, young people, men from across society, students, workers from various sectors, athletes and artists are clamoring for change with incredible courage to bring an end to discriminatory laws and practice ag against women and girls for the full respect of the rights and freedoms of all the people of Iran, for inclusion and equality, for a better, more just future. I urge the government and those in power to listen, to acknowledge the deep-seated social, economic and political grievances that have been building up, to heed people's demands for their rights to be protected and for their voices to be heard, to accept the legitimacy of those calling for different visions of society. Women and girls must be able to feel free and secure in public without fear of violence or harassment, to live in safety and be able to participate in public life on equal footing with men. Young people need to know that they can peacefully express their opinions without fear of arrest and imprisonment. Senor Presidente, the current situation is untenable. Since the protests began, security forces have reportedly responded by using lethal force against unarmed demonstrators and bystanders who posed no threat to life in blatant disregard of international rules on the use of force. The security forces, notably the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps and Basij forces, have used live ammunition, birdshot and other metal pallets, tear gas and batons. According to reliable sources, a conservative estimate of the death toll so far stands at over 300, including at least 40 children. This is unacceptable. We received reports that injured protesters fear going to hospital for risk of being arrested by the security forces. Medical professionals have publicly denounced interference by security forces in the treatment of injured persons. From what we could gather, around 14,000 people, including children, have so far been arrested in the context of these protests. This is a staggering number. I'm alarmed by reports that even children suspected of having participated in protests are being arrested at school. Hundreds of university students have been summoned for questioning, threatened or suspended and barred from entering university campuses. Civil society actors have been targeted and arrested from their homes and workplaces, among them human rights defenders, journalists and lawyers. Arrested protesters continue to be denied access to a lawyer. Many face national security charges with lengthy prison sentences. There are troubling reports of physical and psychological torture and ill treatment of protesters in detention. To extract forced confessions, with some of them broadcast on state media. Families of victims are harassed and targeted. According to official sources, at least 21 people arrested in the context of these protests currently face the death penalty, of which at least six have been sentenced to death on charges of Moharabe and Ifsad Felard, inconsistent with international standards. We have seen statements that seek to delegitimize and label protesters civil society actors and journalists as agents of enemies and foreign states. That's a convenient narrative. As we have seen throughout history, it's the typical narrative of tyranny to distract from the root causes of grievances. The people of Iran from all walks of life, across ethnicities, across ages, are demanding change. These protests are rooted in long-standing denials of freedoms in legal and structural inequalities, in lack of access to information, in internet shutdowns. For decades, women and girls have been held back by perverse, per per pervasive discrimination in law and practice. And in the absence of any effective channels to raise their concerns, fierce 
and frustrations have multiplied. People have become disillusioned in the absence of prospects for any real reforms. So they have taken to the streets. Mr. President, my office has received multiple communications from the government on the events, including domestic investigations into Mrs. Amini's death. We remain concerned that the investigations have failed to meet international standards of impartiality, independence and transparency. Persistent impunity for human rights violations remains one of the major challenges in Iran, further fueling discontent and distrust. Political and security considerations have weakened the independence and impartiality of institutions that are vital to ensuring accountability. <clears throat> Yet, accountability is a key ingredient of the pursuit of justice for human rights violations. I therefore call for independent, impartial and transparent investigative processes into alleged violations of human rights that are consistent with international standards. I am also deeply concerned by the alarming increase in the number of executions since 2021, particularly for drug-related charges. As of, as of September 22, the overall number of executions had reportedly passed 400 for the year, for the first time in five years. This is a substantial increase from at least 330 and 276 executions in 21 and 22 respectively. And at least 85, 85 individuals who were children at the time of committing the alleged offence are currently on death row. They too were executed this year. Mr. President, the Islamic Republic of Iran has accepted recommendations made through this Council's universal periodic review on guaranteeing the right to a fair trial, access to justice, ensuring freedom from torture and detention, and ensuring the rights of detainees, including to medical treatment. I urge the government to implement these key recommendations as a matter of urgency. I call on the authorities immediately to stop using violence and harassment against peaceful protesters and to release all those arrested for peacefully protesting as well as, crucially, to impose a moratorium on the death penalty. Societies are constantly evolving and changing. No society can be calcified or fossilized as it may stand at a, single, at a single point in time. To attempt to do so against the will of its people is futile. I urge those holding power in Iran fully to respect the fundamental freedoms of expression, association and assembly, which are integral to sustainable development, and to engage with the people of Iran about their vision for the future of their country. Change is inevitable. The way forward is meaningful reforms. Motte Shakaram. Thank you. Thank you very much, High Commissioner. I thank you for your statement. I now give the floor to Mr. Javaid Rehman, Special Rapporteur on the Situation of Human Rights in the Islamic Republic of Iran, also on behalf of the Coordination Committee of the Special Procedures. Sir, you have the floor. Mr. President, distinguished delegates, representatives of civil society, it is my honor to be with you today and to deliver a statement on behalf of the Coordination Committee of the Special Procedures and my own mandate. On 26 October, given the gravity of human rights situation in Iran, 10 Special Procedures mandates called for a special session to be convened. I would like first and foremost to thank states members of the Human Rights Council who enabled this historical moment for the people of Iran. Mr. President, on 16 September 2022, for a few locks of her hair reportedly appearing under her hijab, Gina Masa Amini, a Kurdish 22-year-old woman, died in the custody of the so-called morality police. This tragic event was not 
an isolated one, but the latest in a long series of extreme violence committed by Iranian authorities against women. It happened only a month after President Raisi signed a decree ordering further repressive measures for improper hijab. Gina Massa's death sparked nationwide outrage and moved the world's conscience. Following the path of brave women, human rights defenders such as Nasreen Sutode and Nargis Mohammadi, women and girls took to the streets demanding accountability for the death of Gina Massa and seeking an end to decades of systemic and systematic gender discriminatory laws, policies and practices which have sought to erase them from the public sphere and control every aspect of their private lives. In an unprecedented movement, fathers, sons and brothers joined women and girls under the banner, under one banner of one slogan, Zan Zindagi Azadi, Women, Life, Freedom. Overcoming fear, Iranian people united across class, geographic and ethnic lines to demand a life in peace and dignity in a country respectful of rule of law, human rights and fundamental freedoms, a country where their lives matter, where chanting, dancing, showing hair do not lead to flogging, jail or death. Mr. President, since the first days of the protests and in line with long-standing violent practices, top state officials have instructed security forces to violently repress people at any cost to human life. At no point did the Iranian authorities show any genuine willingness to engage in any discussion with demonstrators. Anyone taking part in the protests was quickly labeled as enemy to confront as terrorist or as foreign agent attempting to destabilize Iran. Both the head of the judiciary and the president emphasized the need to act without leniency against protesters. Mr. President. The figures just provided by the High Commissioner for Human Rights, at least 300 reported deaths, including at least 40 children and 20 women and girls, speak for themselves and provide evidence of how these deadly instructions were literally followed, especially in Sistan and Balochistan and in Kurdish areas. As always, oppressed religious and ethnic minorities have been paying the heaviest price. In the past seven days alone, crackdown on protests has intensified with at least 60 to 70 persons killed, including five children, most of them from Kurdish areas. The situation in the Kurdish cities of Piran Sahar, Jawan Rud, and Mahabad is alarming. Even children and youth have not been spared. Last week, three boys, three young boys, were shot dead during a demonstration in the city of Aizeh. Kian, a 10-year-old boy who had imagined a god of rainbows, a colorful future for the children of Iran was one of them. At least four girls aged 16 and 17 were beaten to death. Security and plainclothes forces raided universities and student gatherings and unlawfully fired tear gas, metal pallets and live ammunition at students. With over 15,000 persons arrested since the protest started, Prisons are now bursting with all those who had dreamed of and worked for a better future for Iran. Since 13th November, at least six persons have been sentenced to death and at least 21, including one woman, have been indicted on vague and broadly formulated criminal offenses, carrying the death penalty through grossly unfair summary trials conducted behind closed doors by the Islamic Revolutionary Courts. These courts, which are issuing most of the death sentences, have been used for decades to sentence political activists, journalists, lawyers, and human rights defenders on the basis of forced confessions extracted through torture and other forms of ill treatment. On 11th November, 20, uh, on 11th November 2022, 227 parliamentarians in, in blatant violation of the separation of powers called on the judiciary to act decisively and pr pronounce severe punishment, including sentences carrying the death penalty. As special procedures, we urge the Iranian authorities to stop using the death penalty as a tool to squash protests, reiterating a call to immediately release all peaceful protesters. Mr. President, those who defend human rights and fundamental freedoms endanger their lives and safety inside, but also outside Iran. Reporting human rights violations lead to smear campaigns, threats, violence, surveillance, arbitrary arrests, detentions, torture, and ill treatment in detention, including sexual abuse. 
Over the past two months, we have received numerous testimonies of victims' relatives providing detailed, harrowing accounts of how officials refused to return the bodies of their loved ones until they committed in writing not to hold a funeral and how they were cruelly forced to bury them in remote burial sites, often during the night and in the presence of intelligence agents. On 17th of October, the Committee on the Rights of the Child publicly expressed concern over families being pressured to absolve security forces by declaring that their children had died as a result of suicide and making false confessions. Parents were threatened that their other children would be killed or harmed if they did not make such false public statements on state TV. Intimidation expands beyond Iranian borders. Staff of major media outlets have been receiving death threats while their family members in Iran remain subjected to interrogations, arbitrary arrests, detentions, and travel bans. Mr. President, let me now turn to the structural impunity that prevails in Iran for serious human rights violations, which merits a forceful response from the international community. On 22nd September, together with seven special procedures mandate holders, I denounced the deadly crackdown on, pro on protests and urged the Iranian authorities to undertake an impartial and prompt investigation into Ms. Amini's death to make the findings of the investigation public and to hold all perpetrators accountable. However, the Iranian government has consistently presented unsubstantiated reports and reiterated uh, assertions claiming that Gina Massa did not die as a result of any violence or beatings. In other reports, the government refutes the killings of children by security forces, claiming that they committed suicide, fell from a height, were poisoned or killed by anonymous enemy agents. Not only do these so-called investigations fail to meet the basic standards of impartiality, independence and transparency enshrined in international law, but they constitute further evidence of the fabrication of untruthful scenarios aimed at covering up crimes and ensuring the impunity of perpetrators. They are also an afferent to families' right to truth and justice. Mr. President, in my March 2022 report to this Council, I concluded that there is a there is a complete absence of accountability for crimes under international law and other serious human rights violations in Iran with no prospect that it could be achieved at the domestic level. With the legislature and the executive blocking and negating all avenues of accountability, the judiciary acts as a repressive organ instead of an independent body from which victims can seek recourse. Persons seeking justice are systematically subjected to intimidation, imprisonment, and other forms of reprisals. Emblematic examples include the secret summary and arbitrary executions of thousands of political dissidents in 1988, the unlawful lethal use of force in nationwide protests in 2009, 2017, and 2019, and downing of the Ukrainian Airlines flight PS752 in 2020. None of these events have ever been the subject of any independent investigation, let alone prosecution and punishments. Structural impunity has fueled widespread patterns of unlawful killings and forced disappearances, torture, and other serious human rights violations in Iran. It is in this context that I would like to reiterate the call issued by special procedures mandate holders on the Human Rights Council to, to fulfill its duty hear the prolonged cries of victims for accountability and to establish an international independent investigative mechanism in the events leading up to and since the death of Gina Massa Amini. I thank you, Mr. President. Thank you very much to the Special Rapporteur for his statement. We will now hear from the country concerned, and I give the floor to the Deputy of the Vice President for Women and Family Affairs of the Islamic Republic of Iran, Ms. Khadija Karimi. You have five minutes, Madam. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Mr. President, the Islamic Republic of Iran deeply regrets that the Human Rights Council is abused once again by some arrogant states to antagonize a sovereign UN member state that's fully committed to its obligation to promote and protect the human rights. Reducing the common cause of human rights to a tool for political purposes of a specific groups of Western countries is, is appalling and disgraceful. 
the politically motivated move of Germany to distort the situation of human rights in Iran is an orchestrated ploy for ulterior motives which would lead nowhere but to drive the Human Rights Council from its genuine mandate. While the rights of Iranian people Why the rights of Iranian people have widely been violated by the so-called champions of human rights due to the imposition of unilateral sanctions by the U.S. regime and the implementation of these cruel sanctions by the European countries, specifically Germany, the U.K. and France, as well as by the provision of support to and hosting of terrorist groups who assassinated more than 17,000 innocent Iranians expressing concern about the situation of human rights in Iran and holding a special session as deceptive and fraudulent. Against such a background, the above-mentioned countries lack the moral credibility to preach others on human rights and to request a special session on Iran. Mr. President, this year is the 35th anniversary of the tra tragic chemical attacks by Saddam's regime on Kurdish city of Serdasht in Iran. I should remind that the German government, which pretends to be supporting human rights these days, is the very country that equips Saddam's regime with chemical weapons. They were killing over 13,000 Iranian citizens and injuring more than 100,000, including women and children. This constitutes crime against humanity, doesn't it? Mr. President, after the unfortunate decease of Ms. Mahsa Amini, necessary measures were undertaken, including prompt formation of an independent parliamentary investigation commission, as well as the forensic medical team. However, before the formal announcement of the probe analysis, the biased and hasty reaction of a number of Western authorities and their interventions in internal affairs of Iran turned the peaceful assemblies into riots and violence, setting the ground for terrorist attacks in several cities such as Shiraz, Iza, Zahedan, Isfahan, and Mashhad. A number of government-affiliated anti-Iran TV stations based in the UK and the US and the relevant accounts in social media acted as provocateurs of hatred, inciting violence and terrorism during the riots. The role of Twitter, Instagram, and WhatsApp, including through creating bogus accounts, is undeniable, specifically in spreading disinformation and provoking hate speech and violence, even through their tutorials on making Molotov cocktails and other explosives during the recent weeks. Foreign interventions, violence, terrorist activities, as well as media provocations resulted in the death of more than tens of law enforcement officers, injury of thousands of them, and destruction of thousands of public and private properties. Despite all the foreign interventions and attempts to destabilize the country, the great nation of Iran once again disappointed their enemies. This was marked by the march of millions of people in support of the government on the 4th of November, 2022. Mr. President, I shall remind this body that those who claim the championship of human rights target the lives of Iranian women and children through imposing or implementing inhuman unilateral sanctions and supporting terroristic activities against them as reflected in the report of Special Reporter of Sanctions. The systematic violence against women and girls in their own countries, refusing to accept the women refugees in their countries, as well as keeping silent in women's situation in Yemen and occupied Palestine, assassination of Palestinian journalists Shirin Abu Aghila, and unmarked graves of indigenous children in Canada are just a few examples which discredit their alleged claims for human rights. On the situation of women in my country, 
It should be noted that according to credible statistics and reports, the Islamic Republic of Iran has achieved greatly in empowering women and girls, as well as in protecting and promoting their roles and rights in social and public life in the past four decades particularly in the field of education, health, industry, economy, sports and politics, where equal opportunities for women have been provided in all areas of personal and public life. A glimpse at few of such statistical reports reveal that the Iranian women make up 56% of the students of public Iranian universities. Around 34% of the faculty members of public universities are women, and 40% of the specialist phys physicians are women. Today, 1,121 female judges and 2,300 female media managers, 96,998 sports referees, 934,589 professional athletes, and 150,384 women as coaches are actively serving their country. It is evident that such highly achieved women are qualified enough to decide on their own without the need for the inf inference of external forces. I thank you, Mr. President. Thank you for your presentation. Um, I will now turn to the list of speakers. Allow me to recall the established time limits of 2 minutes and 30 seconds for council members and of 1 minute and 30 seconds for observer states and other observers. The list of speakers will close in 15 minutes. Starting with the list of speakers for member states of the council, I give the floor to Her Excellency Annalena Baerbock, Minister for Foreign Affairs of Germany. You have the floor, Madam. Mr. President, colleagues, Gina was 22 years old when she was killed for not wearing her headscarf properly. Aduk Tarsel was 17 when he skipped school to take part in protests in Iran and was killed. Minou was 62. At her gravesite, her daughter stood with her head shaved and bare. These are three of an estimated more than 300 who have been killed because they stood up for their right to determine their own life, including at least 40 children. Way more than 15,000 have been arrested and the Iranian regime is now threatening protesters with a death penalty. And why? Only because these women, men and children want to enjoy the rights we all want to enjoy, to live in dignity and without discrimination. That is why prior to today we have spoken to everyone in this room of you representing your states to hear your views and your voices. Some have told us that we should not single out one country. I hear you. The United Nations were founded to protect the sovereignty of every state. But a regime that uses this power to violate the rights of its own people is violating the values of our United Nations. The High Commissioner and the Special Rapporteur has just made this very clear. What these rights are is not upon anyone's interpretation. These rights are stated here in black and white in the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, to which Iran is a state party. I quote Article 19, the right to hold opinions without interference. I quote Article 21, 
the right of peaceful assembly. I quote Article 2, the respect of all people's rights without distinction of any kind, such as gender or political opinion. On many occasions, we have called upon Iran to respect these rights to stop the violent crackdown on protesters, the bloodshed, the arbitrary killing, the mass arrests, the death penalties. The only answer we received was more violence, more death, along with Iran's continuing refusal to give the United Nations Special Rapporteur access to the country, as we have just heard. That is why we are now proposing that an independent and impartial UN mechanism to be established to investigate these human rights violations so that those responsible can be held accountable. Because impunity prevents justice. Justice for sisters, justice for sons, justice for mothers. They have names. Gina, Adu Fazel, Minu. Today is about them. Today is also a test of our courage here in the United Nations, about our courage to speak out. We each represent our state, but we also represent millions of men, women, and children. So I call on you, be the voice of these of our people of the United Nations. As they sing in Iran, for dancing in the street, for women, life, freedom, for our human rights. Gracias. Thank you very much. I will now give the floor to His Excellency Jean Asselborn, Minister for Foreign and European Affairs of Luxembourg. This will be a video statement. Monsieur le Président. President, Luxembourg is profoundly concerned by the brutal crackdowns on peaceful demonstrations which had followed the murder of Masa Amini by the morality police in Iran. We firmly condemn the disproportionate use of force, which so often has been lethal use of force, by the Iranian authorities against peaceful demonstrators, in particular against women and girls, children, for more than two months now. Women and girls who are human rights defenders have been particularly targeted. Thus, Nilufa Hamedi and Alehe Mohammadi are today potentially facing life imprisonment for having publicly spoken of the fate of Masa Amini. We call for their release unconditionally. We also call on Iranian authorities to stop all arbitrary arrests and detentions and indictments of peaceful demonstrators of journalists and human rights defenders. Credible reports accuse the Iranian security forces of using sexual violence as a weapon against demonstrators. The authorities of the Islamic Republic of Iran are faced with a historic choice. The claims of the demonstrators and international law are clear. The authorities must respect and protect fully the human rights and fundamental freedoms of all in line with their obligations under the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights. Women, life, freedom, that is the call of the demonstrators. They are calling purely and simply for, the equality, for equality and the human rights of women and girls. But the authorities are choosing, once again, repression. Faced with this intransigence, the Council must show that it has heard the calls for dignity and freedom of young people in Iran. Luxembourg fully supports the establishment of a fact-finding mission. This is indispensable to make sure that those responsible for human rights violations be identified and held accountable. We call for all members of the Council to vote in favour of the resolution tabled. Thank you. Thank you. I now give the floor to His Excellency Wopke Hoeskstra, 
Minister for Foreign Affairs of the Netherlands. Excellencies, over the last two months, brave Iranians have stood up for their rights. For the rights of women and girls. For the right to express themselves. And for the right to live their lives in freedom. These brave people should be heard, not beaten. And like anyone who stands up for basic freedoms. I am, like all of you, deeply concerned about the situation in Iran. After the killing of Masha Amini, we called for a transparent and impartial investigation into this case and the violence that followed. We deeply regret that more than two months later, no significant steps in this direction have been taken. And while we have not seen an impartial report on the death of Masha Amini, we have seen credible reports of the arbitrary detention of thousands of innocent protesters as well as lawyers, journalists and human rights defenders. The Netherlands condemns in the strongest possible terms the deaths of hundreds of innocent civilians, including minors, at the hands of the security forces during these protests, just as we condemn the arbitrary arrest of many more. Furthermore, we are greatly concerned about the imposition of the death penalty on protesters. My country opposes the death penalty on principle. We oppose it at all times and under all circumstances. And my country's message today is threefold. We call on Iran to launch an impartial and transparent investigation into the death of Masha Amini and the violence that followed. We call on Iran to ensure fair trials and release all arbitrary prisoners immediately. And we call on Iran to end and stop imposing the death penalty on protesters. We make this call with great conviction because the brave people of Iran are standing up for their rights, their freedom and their dignity. We add our voice to theirs. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I give the floor to His Excellency Mantas Adomenas, Vice Minister of Foreign Affairs of Lithuania. Mr. President, Lithuania fully aligns itself with the EU statement. In my national capacity, allow me to emphasize that the international community cannot stand aside and must react properly to the grave and systematic human rights violations in the Islamic Republic of Iran, especially against women and children. Therefore, Lithuania welcomes the convening of this session and joins the call for collection of evidence and accountability, which is critical to preventing further violations. Use of the death penalty and disproportionate use of force by the authorities of Iran against peaceful protesters is unacceptable, and we strongly condemn such actions. Furthermore, we deplore the involvement of Iran in Russia's brutal, unprovoked and unjustified war of aggression against Ukraine by supplying weapons to the aggressor state. We call on the Iranian authorities to respect international obligations of Iran and refrain from violence and aggression, both at home and abroad. We strongly encourage Iran to strictly abide by the principles enshrined in the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, to which Iran is a party. The Iranian people are entitled to exercise their rights to freedom of peaceful assembly and association, freedom of opinion and expression, and other fundamental freedoms without fear of reprisals by their own government. Journalists and other media workers should be able to report freely without threats, harassments and assaults against them. Lithuania, together with the international community, will continue to stand in solidarity with the Iranian people in their demand to be able to exercise their rights and fundamental freedoms, both online and offline. In order to assist Iran in meeting its international obligations and to end impunity for the reported human rights violations, Lithuania supports the establishment of an independent international fact-finding mission by the Human Rights Council. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I give the floor to Czechia on behalf of the EU. Mr. President, I have the honour to speak on behalf of the European Union. The EU welcomes the convening of the special session to address the deteriorating human rights situation in Iran. The death in custody of Masha Amini 
must be duly investigated and those responsible must be held accountable. We have seen brave Iranians take to the streets to exercise their right to freedom of expression and peaceful assembly. Women and girls have emerged as a major driver of a nationwide movement to uphold human rights of all Iranians. The widespread and disproportionate use of force by the security forces against non-violent protesters, incarceration of children and preventative detentions of civil society activists is unjustifiable and unacceptable. People in Iran have the right to a peaceful protest. The decision to severely restrict internet access is a clear violation of freedom of expression and association. We are receiving alarming reports concerning the number of people killed or seriously injured during the protests, including women and children. Perpetrators of violence, inclu including sexual and gender-based violence, must be held accountable. We are appalled by the imposition of the death penalty against protesters. The European Union strongly opposes the death penalty at all times and in all circumstances. The EU also recalls that the prohibition of torture is absolute. The EU urges Iran to strictly abide by the principles enshrined in the ICCPR to which Iran is a party. Iran must stop the violent crackdown on protests and ensure access to information, including unrestricted internet access. Iran must also clarify the number of deaths and arrests, release non-violent protesters, provide due process to all detainees' cases, cease all executions, including those of juvenile offenders, and start pursuing a consistent policy towards the abolition of capital punishment. We also call on Iran to engage with the Iranian people in a meaningful and inclusive dialogue on improving human rights, including gender equality, and to engage relevant UN mechanisms. The EU will continue to react firmly against violation of human rights in Iran and stands ready to engage with Iranian authorities to promote and protect human rights. I thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Finland, please, on behalf of a group of countries. I have the honour to speak on behalf of the Nordic and Baltic countries. We welcome the convening of this special session. During the past two months, we have witnessed so many brave Iranians, <coughs> including women and girls, demanding their rights. These peaceful protests have faced increasing repression and crackdown by the authorities. We are alarmed by the death of over 300 persons, among them more than 40 children. We strongly condemn the use of force against peaceful protesters. We share the concern of the OHCHR and the UN Special Rapporteurs and urge Iran to immediately release the thousands of persons arrested for exercising their right to peaceful protest and to stop in indicting individuals for doing so. The threat of applying capital punishment in relation to these demonstrations is alarming. We strongly oppose the use of death penalty at all times and all circumstances. Mr. President, many Iranians have chosen to, to defend their, the rights of women and girls in the country after the death of Masa Amini in po police custody. Iran must end the persistent discrimination against women and girls. This Council has a duty to hold Iran accountable for violations of human rights. We need a mechanism to investigate these ongoing violations. Therefore, we strongly support the establishment of the fact-finding mission to complement the mandate of the Special Rapporteur. We support the resolution presented today and encourage all other member states to do so. We expect Iran to fully cooperate with the Council's mechanisms, including by granting the Special Rapporteur full and unhindered access to the country. Finally, we firmly support Iranians courageously 
demanding the respect for human rights. People of Iran deserve hope for justice. I thank you. Gracias. Je donne la parole. Thank you. I give the floor to France. Thank you, President. Women, life, freedom. This simple and powerful motto is the motto that Iranian men and women have for more than two months now been recalling the values that they defend. Equality between men and women, dignity for human beings, fundamental freedoms. For this is about values, about universal values, our values, those of the United Nations. In the face of these legitimate aspirations, we see repression. Repression is not new, but the atrocities committed over the last few months shed a very harsh light on the unacceptable practices of the Iranian regime. France firmly condemns these unjustifiable practices. The EU has taken sanctions, and we did so swiftly and with unanimity against the main perpetrators. It is now up to this council to take action so that Iran, who sovereignly committed to respecting the ICCPR, for Iran to be held to account. In establishing a fact-finding mission, the Council will enable the international community to have independent, impartial, public and transparent information about the violations committed by the regime. This would be a step forwards in the fight against impunity, a significant step for the defense of our universal values. I call on all states to support, without any reservations, the establishment of this fact-finding mission. President. France once again commends the courage and determination of the demonstrators in Iran, and we pay tribute to the memory of all those, including children, who were victims of this repression. Thank you. Merci. Thank you. The list of speakers is now closed. I give the floor to Japan. Gracias, señor presidente. Japan believes that uh, universal values such as human rights, freedom, democracy, and the rule of law should be respected in every country. Based on this belief, we supported the holding of this special session. Japan is seriously concerned about the deterioration of the human rights situation in the Islamic Republic of Iran. In particular, the crackdown of the protest triggered by the death of Ms. Mahsa Amini. We call upon the Islamic Republic of Iran to listen sincerely to the views of the Iranian people, take concrete steps toward improving the human rights situation, and bring the situation under control in a peaceful manner. Japan remains open to dialogue with Iran to further exchange of views on the efforts to improve the, its human rights situation, including through a bi uh, bilateral human rights dialogue. Gracias. Thank you, Ambassador. I give the floor to Venezuela. Thank you, President, and good morning. Venezuela, once again, would like to express its deep concern in the face of the growing selectivity and double standards that have become the hallmark of the convening of these special sessions of the Council against countries of the Global South. This opens the way for instrumentalization of the noble cause of human rights for the sake of other types of interests, in particular political ones, as we have said on multiple occasions already. We, of course, condemn the constant meddling which these activities involve activities that are like a court for judging the political and social systems of countries that do not enjoy Western sympathy. This special session against Iran makes no sense, especially in light of the comprehensive information provided by the country through more than 20 reports on the events that have taken place since the, the deplorable death of Ms. Masha Amini events which have been marked by a full-blown campaign of fake news in international media which fuel this information and which have been driven by hegemonic states to destabilize the Iranian government. 
Iran, along with its people, has for decades been under siege from these countries who impose cruel unilateral coercive measures that undermine the most fundamental rights of the Iranian people and which amount to crimes against humanity. And yet there is a sort of omerta on that in this council. Despite that, the country has continued to cooperate with this council, its mechanisms and the office of the High Commissioner. It maintains fruitful interaction with these bodies based on mutual respect and constructive efforts. Colleagues, we reject, as we always do, on the basis of principles, the attempts to impose a new monitoring mechanism against Iran without Iran's consent, and which, once again, is an example of our Council's failure to find spaces for dialogue and cooperation instead of imposing measures. My country is firmly committed to human rights, in particular of women and girls, and to the supreme values of peace, friendship, and solidarity between the nations of the world. Therefore, we will continue to reject the unilateralism that these initiatives represent, unilateralism which challenges international law and multinationalism and the universal principles of respect for sovereignty, non-interference in internal affairs of states, and the right to self-determination of peoples, which enshrined in the UN Charter. Thank you. I give the floor to Mexico. Ambassador, you have the floor. Gracias, señor presidente. Thank you, President. Mexico would like to express its concern in the face of the serious deterioration of human rights in Iran. The deplorable death of Masa Amini, who died in police custody after having been arrested because of violating jihad rules, hijab rules, undermines the it was a reflection of the structural discrimination faced by women and girls in the country. Our country condemns any form of violence, including violence that is based on gender, and there can be nothing that justifies such acts of repression. It is essential to ensure the full exercise of the right to bodily integrity as well as the freedom of belief and expression. We also would like to express our deep concern in light of the use of force against peaceful demonstrators, which led to the death of at least 304 individuals, including at least 41 children. And we reject the recent death sentences that have been handed down. We urge the government of Iran to take urgent steps to ensure the safety and security of the civilian population, with a particular emphasis on the protection of girls, boys, and young persons, as well as ensuring access to justice and reparation for all victims, including guarantees of non-repetition. It is essential that the Iranian government put an end to violations and should ensure the uh, due process and to not use death sentences as a uh, form of intimidation. It is important to protect civic space and to protect the work of human rights defenders and journalists and to not criminalize peaceful demonstrators. It is also essential to lift restrictions on media and internet communications. We call on the government of Iran to respect international human rights law and to strengthen measures to protect freedom of expression, freedom of assembly, and peaceful protest. The equal participation of all people in political and public life, including women and girls, is essential to ensure peace and sustainable development of Iran. We trust that the Iranian government will establish a constructive dialogue with the international community and the Office of the High Commission in order to overcome all these challenges. Thank you very much, President. Thank you. Well, to the United Kingdom. Yes, Senor Presidente, and thank you, High Commissioner and Special Rapporteur, for your powerful statements uh, this morning. Mr. President, Serena Ismael Zadeh, 16 years old, in Karaj, Minu Majidi, 62-year-old mother of two in Western Kamanshar. 16-year-old Nika Shakarami, last heard from by a friend while being chased down the street during a protest in Tehran, identified by her parents in a morgue nine days later. Hananai Kia, a 23-year-old hairdresser, recently engaged, walking home from a dentist appointment in Naushar. Hadis Najafi, a 22-year-old video blogger. Masa Moguyi, 18 years old, in central Fuladshar. 
Ghazala Shalabi, 33 years old, shot in the head while filming protests in her hometown. Her last words, caught on film, were do not be afraid. Mr. President, High Commissioner, colleagues, we are all too familiar with the tragic story of Masa Gina Amini. However, these names are just some of the other women and girls who have lost their lives at the hands of the Iranian security forces since Masha died. We don't have the time today to pay tribute to them all by name. But let me send a clear message to their families, their friends, that their deaths will not be forgotten. Let us remember the more than 350 people killed, the countless children that have lost their lives, the thousands of people currently detained, the people sentenced to death, all for simply exercising their rights to freedom of expression and assembly. Sadly, this is not a one-off. Let's also remember the hundreds who died in the violent crackdowns on protests in 2019 and the thousands more killed and detained over so many years in contravention of their human rights. Today, let's send a clear message that Iran must stop suppressing the voices of women and girls, the appalling state-led violence must end, that there must be justice for victims, and that this council stands firmly behind the girls, women, mothers and daughters of Iran, supporting their calls for women, life, freedom. Zan, Zandegi, Azadi. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I give the floor to the delegation, Brazil. Mr. President, Brazil shares the concerns of the international community about the recent deterioration of the human rights situation in Iran following the death of Maza Amini. The violent repression of peaceful protesters is not compatible with international human rights standards. Brazil considers the Human Rights Council as the appropriate forum to follow upon this situation. We would have preferred to rely on the one of the current special procedures at the disposal of the Council, rather than to create a new mechanism. It should be recalled that the mandate of the UN Special Rapporteur on Iran, Mr. Javaid Rehman, was recently renewed. We encourage Iran to move forward in advancing the rights of women and girls, including by enacting legislation to protect women against violence in alignment with international human rights law. Brazil believes that it is crucial to de-escalate the violence and to undertake efforts in favor of the investigation and accountability of all those involved in the violations. We urge the Council to support initiatives to maintain and expand spaces for institutional dialogue with the concerned country, where elements that underlie the present crisis could be dealt with, thus contributing to containing the situation and laying the basis for a durable solution. Brazil has decided to abstain on the current draft resolution. We urge the Iranian authorities to fully investigate the case of Maz Amini and to bring those responsible to justice, as well as to act with utmost restraint in the context of the protests. We further encourage Iran to continue to enhance its engagement with the international human rights mechanisms in a spirit of cooperation, openness, and constructive dialogue. Thank you. Gracias. Thank you. I give the floor to the Republic of Korea. Embajador. Thank you, Mr. President. Since the death of Marsha Amini in September, the Republic of Korea has been closely monitoring the unfolding situation in Iran with concern. My delegation is especially concerned about the reports of ongoing violence and excessive use of force against the peaceful protesters. In the past two months, an alarming number of protesters have been reportedly killed, with thousands arrest, arrested. We are also alarmed by reports on the issuance of death sentences connected to the recent protests. In light of this, we hope that the, the Iranian authorities will refrain from using force against the peaceful protesters and release all those who are arbitrarily detained. 
Furthermore, it is our belief that all alleged human rights violations in connection with the recent protests must be thoroughly investigated. Mr. President, women and girls, as equal members of society, are entitled to the full and equal enjoyment of fundamental human rights without any discrimination. In this regard, it is important that Iranian authorities take heed of the grievances of its people and address the underlying causes through an inclusive dialogue. In this process, women's participation must be prioritized and human rights and fundamental freedoms must be protected and respected. I thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I give the floor to the Czech Republic. Mr. President, in response to the deaths of Masha Amini and the violent suppression of protests in Iran over the past two months, which has resulted in more than 300 victims, we have joined the than 40 other countries. We note the information provided by Iran and the ongoing national efforts aimed at ensuring investigation and accountability. At the same time, we continue to receive deeply worrying reports from civil society, special procedures, as well from the OHCHR of gross violations of human rights, especially of women and girls. This session is an urgent plea for Iran to end the violence and engage in a meaningful dialogue on human rights in cooperation with the UN mechanisms in order to achieve accountability for victims. In the country, we continue to witness violent security forces raids not only in the streets, but also in universities and hospitals. Protesters in ethnic minority areas are treated particularly brutally. Even children are among the victims. In recent days, we have also seen dozens of death sentenced, sentences imposed on protesters, which is alarming. Iran must immediately stop the widespread and disproportionate use of force against non-violent protesters as well as the arbitrary arrests and ensure due process for all detainees. All the acts must be properly investigated and the perpetrators held accountable. Therefore, we support the establishment of, a, of an independent international investigative mission as proposed in the presented draft resolution. Finally, let me recall our well-known position. We are against the death penalty in all circumstances and without exceptions. We therefore call on Iranian government to abolish the death penalty and impose an immediate moratorium on its use. I thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you. Paraguay, please. President, Paraguay is following with great concern the, the deterioration of the human rights situation, and especially of women and children in Iran. The civilian population is once again the worst affected, and that is true particularly of the most vulnerable people, women and children. Paraguay deeply regrets the limits on fundamental freedoms, as well as the repression and the disproportionate use of force during protests. In the Special Rapporteur's latest report, there are reports of such violations as well as reports of an alarming number of wounded and dead, as well as arrests, enforced disappearances, arbitrary detentions and executions. Similarly, reports about the decision of the Iranian parliament to seek the application of the death penalty for demonstrators is, to our mind, a serious setback in terms of fundamental rights. The death penalty should be abolished in all legal systems. This serious context has driven Paraguay's delegation to support the convening of this special session on the understanding that the Human Rights Council is the appropriate forum for tackling the alleged uh, reports. Paraguay supports the holding of these debates, regardless of its vote, with a view to hearing all states, all stakeholders. We call on the Iranian authorities to postpone the application of the death penalty. This is an extreme measure that does not chime with the progress achieved by humanity. 
Moreover, we call for all persons who have been arbitrarily detained simply for exercising their right to the freedom of expression and opinion to be released. We urge the Iranian authorities to honor their international commitments and to guarantee swift, transparent, objective and impartial investigations in accordance with international standards. Finally, Paraguay believes that the mechanisms established by the universal human rights system have all necessary tools to achieve the goals which underpin the creation of this council. Thank you. Thank you. I give the floor to Argentina. Thank you very much, President. Argentina supported the convening of this special session for discussing the deterioration of the human rights situation in the Islamic Republic of Iran, and especially with regard to women, girls, and boys. We are aware of the importance of helping to ensure that this council has the necessary elements to cooperate with and assist the country concerned in fulfilling its international human rights obligations through international mechanisms in this field. Like the High Commissioner, and several special procedures and the UN agencies, we are concerned by the current human rights situation in Iran in the context of the protests that have taken place since the death of Gina Massa Amini in September. We are particularly alarmed by the situation of women, girls and boys, human rights defenders, civil society activists, lawyers, journalists, students, teachers and relatives of demonstrators. We urge the Iran government to promote, protect, and respect human rights and to take all necessary measures to prevent extrajudicial killings, enforce disappearances, sexual and gender-based violence, arbitrary arrests and detentions, torture and other cruel, inhumane, or degrading treatments, including against peaceful demonstrators. We also urge the country to put an end both in law and in practice and both in public and private life to all forms of discrimination against women and girls and to respect their fundamental human rights, including the right to opinion and expression and to peaceful assembly and association. We would like to appeal for there to be prompt, impartial, independent, objective investigations in accordance with international standards into allegations of human rights violations so as to hold perpetrators to account and to ensure appropriate reparation for victims. Also, as the Office of the High Commissioner recently called for, we would like to call on the Iranian authorities to impose a moratorium on the death penalty immediately and to abstain from imposing the death penalty on people for participating in peaceful protests and to repeal the death sentences that have already been handed down. Finally, we would like to urge the Iranian government to cooperate with the Special Rapporteur on the situation of human rights in the Islamic Republic of Iran by allowing him, amongst other things, to visit the country in accordance with his mandate and to fully cooperate with the thematic special procedures of the Human Rights Councils and with the UN treaty bodies. Thank you very much. Gracias. Thank you. I give the floor to Montenegro. Thank you, Mr. President. Montenegro welcomes convening of this session. The killing of 22-year-old Masa Mini has become a symbol of courage and resistance to the systemic repression of the Iranian authorities. As brave Iranian women and men continue to demonstrate these days, taking to the streets to exercise their right to assemble and protest, and calling on the authorities to uphold the rights of all Iranian citizens. We profoundly deplore the widespread and disproportionate use of force by security forces against non-violent protesters, resulting in an increased number of people killed or injured, many of them young and women. The notable increase in the number of executions in Iran, as well as the recent use of the death penalty against protesters, are also of great concern. We echo the calls on Iranian authorities to cease all executions, including those of juvenile offenders, release all non-violent protesters, provide due process to all detainees, and abolish the death penalty. Those responsible for the death of Massa and others must be held accountable as well as the perpetrators of violence and grave violations of human rights. We stand in solidarity with the Iranians in their calls on the authorities to respect and protect the rights of women and children and human rights in general, including the right to freedom of assembly and freedom of expression. These rights, including access to Internet and social media platforms, must be ensured. 
We also continue to join our voice to those across the UN system and beyond, calling on the Iranian authorities to strictly abide by the state's obligation under the international human rights law to serve justice and prevent the recurrence of grave human rights violations. The key is to ensure accountability. Montenegro, therefore, supports the establishment of an independent international fact-finding mission to investigate, document, and preserve evidence of alleged human rights violations stemming from the protests starting on 16 September 2022, including the gender dimension of such violations. Thus, we will vote in favor of the tabled resolution and call upon all members of the Council to do the same. I thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I give the floor to China, please. Mr. President, China has listened carefully to the statements of all countries, including that of Iran. We always advocate that we should impartially and objectively look at all countries' efforts to promote and protect human rights and respect each country's own choice of human rights development path. In recent years, the Human Rights Council has seen an increasing level of politicization and confrontation and numerous country-specific resolutions which has triggered more and more concerns. How the Council fulfills its duty in line with its mandate is a question that merits our serious consideration. As many other countries, China believes that dialogue and cooperation is the right approach to promote and protect human rights. The Council's work should observe the principles of universality, impartiality, objectivity, non-politicization and non-selectivity. We should carry out constructive dialogue and cooperation to appropriately settle disputes, should avoid turning human rights into a tool to intervene to other countries' internal affairs, and should avoid double standards. We've noticed the efforts taken by Iran to address its issue as well as the information it has provided. And we have the confidence that the government will be able to well address the issue. We don't support convening the special session today. I also would like to point out that the UCMs, the UCMs have caused severe harm to the human rights of people in Iran and in other developing countries which also worth the attention of the international community. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you. I give the floor to Ukraine, please. Thank you, Mr. President. We thank the High Commissioner and Special Rapporteur for their evidence-based accounts of the deteriorating human rights situation in, in Iran, which is a matter of deep concern. We are alarmed by the high level of violence against civilians, particularly women, children and youth, demanding the end of systemic discriminatory laws, policies and practices across the country. Reports on the deaths of over 300 protesters, including children, caused by the state-sponsored violence are shocking. Ukraine strongly condemns acts of violence deployed against the demonstrators by the security forces and calls for establishing accountability for perpetrators. Mass indictments on charges of death sentences for participation or alleged participation in peaceful demonstrations are egregious. Ukraine is particularly concerned about the fate of women right defenders jailed for their actions to promote and protect human rights and fundamental freedoms through peaceful means. We urge the Iranian authorities to immediately release from detention all protesters who have been arbitrarily deprived of their liberty. As a symptom of its authoritative nature, the Iranian regime not only increases oppression internally, it also undermines international rule-based order by providing weapons to feed Russia's war of aggression against Ukraine. The weapons that are mercilessly killing Ukrainian civilians and destroying our civilian infrastructure in violation of international humanitarian and human rights law. 
any state that employs such practices at home and abroad has to be scrutinized by this Council. Therefore, Ukraine supported the convening of the special session and was among early co-sponsors of the resolution establishing a fact-finding mission to investigate ongoing violations. We stand with the people of Iran as they continue fighting for their rights to live in dignity and freedom. I thank you. Gracias. Tiene la palabra. Thank you. I call on Pakistan, please. Mr. President, the Council is meeting today for the 35th time in a special session setting to consider a situation of human rights where questions of foundational principles, criteria, the notion of accountability and value addition remain open. This Council is mandated to advance universal respect for and realization of human rights. The normative underpinnings of how to promote and realize these rights are stipulated in the UN General Assembly resolution that established this body. Impartiality, objectivity, engagement, cooperation and consent of the country concerned are the foundations on which this Council must act. This normative framework places a burden of responsibility on the Council members to act wisely and proportionately and in line with the principles of the UN Charter. The track record, outcomes and the aftermath of previous special sessions represent a sobering picture. Except in one situation of foreign occupation, this Council has almost exclusively considered the human rights situations of developing countries. Even in these situations, the singular focus has been the civil and political rights. It is clear that the situation of human rights improved only where the time-tested instruments of dialogue, cooperation and consent of the country were pursued. In cases where political considerations trumped these instruments, the situations have in fact further deteriorated. As to the subject of this session, we are saddened by the loss of lives in Iran as well as the damage to public properties and disruption of daily life. We are also saddened by loss of lives as a result of the condemnable terrorist attack in Shiraz. We also note Iran's willingness to engage its outreach to members of the Council and others. We also wish to note the investigations carried out by Iran and its resolve to adhere to the rule of law and to fulfill its human rights obligations in accordance with international law as well as its, its constitutional and judicial mechanisms. We invite the Council members to reflect on the lessons from previous sessions and craft commensurate responses that help improve human rights situations instead of aggravating them. Thank you. Thank you. When I give it to the United States. Gracias, Senor Presidente. I thank the High Commissioner, Special Rapporteur Raymond, and civil society for their valuable documentation, advocacy, and recommendations in Germany and Iceland for requesting this urgent session. We are all watching with horror as events unfold in Iran, and yet what we see is so very limited due to the communications blackout imposed by the authorities. The people of Iran are demanding something so simple, something that most of us here take for granted, the opportunity to speak and to be heard. We applaud their courage, especially the women, girls, and young people who are bravely demanding respect for their human rights and accountability for abuses. They stand for the very principles on which the United Nations was founded. This historic movement was sparked by the inexcusable, unjustifiable death in custody of Maza Amini and has been met with brutal killings by security forces of hundreds of Iranians. Countless others have been subjected to sexual violence. The reported torture or other mistreatment of political prisoners, including peaceful protesters, must end. We hear daily reports of increasing violence by the authorities. Again, this past weekend in Mahabad, security forces reportedly used lethal force against protesters. We are deeply disturbed by the detention and killing of children, including nine-year-old Kian Pirfalak, and we condemn the sham trials and death sentences for those peacefully protesting. We must not forget Maza and Kian and the countless other individual lives at risk or lost. The names on display next to me and the photos behind me represent just a few of the lives, lives 
full of potential that were taken simply for standing up for basic human rights. They are the reason we are here today. Their deaths demand independent, impartial, and transparent investigations, investigations that Iran has shown it is unwilling to undertake. Iran has also detained numerous activists and media workers, including two women reporters, integral to breaking the story of Maza's death. It is unconscionable that those women now face charges that carry the death penalty in Iran for exercising their freedom of expression. The United States condemns the violent crackdown in the strongest terms. We support all Iranians who continue to demonstrate in the face of this suppression and join their urgent call for accountability. They are an inspiration to me personally and to the world. As members of this council, we must hold Iranian officials and government institutions to account. We must take this stand for women, life, freedom. I thank you. Thank you, and let me remind the rules of this council to uh, avoid presenting images or any other manifestation while we speak. Thank you. Um, I give the floor to Cuba. President, we reject the convening of special sessions and any other kind of initiatives that single out specific countries. Debates, resolutions, and punitive mandates imposed against the will of the countries concerned are selective, and they are doomed to fail. The convening of this special session is yet another example of the discriminatory and politicized practices and double standards that have been imposed in this council by Western states and their allies. Cuba once again reiterates its rejection of this kind of politically motivated maneuvers. As we have emphasized on previous occasions, it is only through constructive dialogue and cooperation that the Council will be effective in protecting and promoting all human rights. President, the Universal Periodic Review is the fitting mechanism for analyzing the human rights situations of all countries on an equal footing. A few days after having begun the fourth cycle of the review, its effectiveness has been more than proven for protecting and promoting human rights. The UPR is a universal mechanism and states attend it mostly in the spirit of dialogue, respect and cooperation. This special session as well as the draft resolution that has been presented uh, run completely counter to the spirit of cooperation and dialogue promoted by the UPR. President, Cuba is opposed to the imposition of unilateral sanctions against Iran, and we are opposed to attempts to subvert the internal order of sovereign and independent states. We reject the interference in the internal affairs of other states and the manipulation of human rights for blatant political ends. Thank you. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much. I now give the floor to Kazakhstan. Mahalur. Mr. President, Kazakhstan attaches great importance to the promotion and the protection of the rights of women and children. We believe that women have an important role in shaping the future of states and peoples, hence the importance of providing them with the necessary protection from all forms of discrimination, violence, abuse, and harmful traditional practices, as they are one of the most affected groups by international and internal circumstances and events. We take note of national reports submitted by Iran on the measures taken to investigate the death of Mahsa Amini and the following developments. We call on the Iranian government to strengthen cooperation with the Office of the High Commissioner and the special procedures in this regard. Kazakhstan firmly stands for constructive dialogue and cooperation between countries in the field of human rights, avoiding politicization of human rights issues and exerting pressure. The enjoyment of human rights cannot be separated from the historical and cultural traditions of different countries. Mr. President, my delegation hopes that the international community and this Council will objectively consider the human rights situation in Iran and respect the path of human rights development chosen by the Iranian people. I thank you.
Thank you. Pasamos ahora. We will now move on to the list of observers, and I will begin by giving the floor to Her Excellency Hajar Latif, the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Belgium. Monsieur le Président, il y a plus de votes. President, more than 20 years ago, Kofi Annan, at that point UN Secretary General, declared violence against women may violence against women is perhaps the most shameful human rights violation and it's perhaps the most pervasive as long as it continues we cannot claim to be making real progress towards equality development and peace and that is what this session is focusing on today generalized violence against Iranian women and against the many men who stood beside them for having peacefully demonstrated against discrimination for having defended their human rights Belgium firmly condemns the generalized use of excessive force and lethal force by the Iranian security forces against peaceful demonstrators following the death of Masa Amini. We are particularly concerned about the detentions and murder of children by security forces and alarmed by this. Belgium urges Iran to respect its human rights obligations, in particular those stemming from the Convention on the Rights of the Child. As firm opponents of the death penalty, Belgium urges the Iranian authorities to also stop indicting its citizens for crimes which may, may be subject to death penalties purely for their alleged pe participation in peaceful demonstrations. Violent repression should stop, and impunity of perpetrators of violence must also stop. Thank you. And now I give the floor to Her Excellency Ms. Tordis Kolbrun Reykfjord. Gilfadotir, Minister of Foreign Affairs of Iceland. You have the floor, ma'am. Thank you. Mr. President, last September, 22-year-old Sheena Masyamini didn't comply with legal requirements in Iran on how to wear a whale in public. 